The famed mountain men of the Old West. Hunters, trappers, and explorers who sought out adventure and were determined to survive the dangers of the wilderness or die trying. This included men like Kit Carson and Jedediah Smith, but maybe none more famous than Jim Bridger. In 1824, Bridger traversed the Bear River in an attempt to see where it would lead. Nearly 200 years later, the mountain men of today are attempting to recreate that exact same journey. We're out here today following the footsteps of Jim Bridger. They were talking about this river and wanted to know where it went. Now Bridger, he was a young man at that time. He was only about 19 years old, first time up into the mountains, and he wanted to prove himself to the other trappers. He was in a, a bull boat, like what you see over here, and he floated from Cache Valley all the way down to the Great Salt Lake. When he, when he got to the Great Salt Lake, because of the saltiness, he assumed that he had found the Pacific Ocean. Despite not actually finding the Pacific Ocean as a young man, Bridger went on to have many more successful exploits that led to his notoriety as a famed mountain man. His legend has inspired many of those in the Mountain Man Association to follow his footsteps. The American Mountain Man Association is a group of men that wanted to take and emulate the fur trade trappers of old and do things the way they did. We tan our own leather to make our outfits. We try to make everything we use. That's what we do. We love the wilderness, we love the environment, we love history. So we uh, take every opportunity we can to gather some good men, people you know that always have your six, that no matter what's going down, you're not gonna be abandoned. You're, if you have an injury, or you're hungry, or you have any other need, somebody in this group is going to step forward. But we go out and not only survive, we thrive. Just last night at our camp, we, we made camp and went out, hunted around a little bit and found fresh asparagus growing. So we had fresh asparagus for our supper, uh, excellent meal, along with some very good steaks. Tonight we're having a, an elk stew with some more fresh asparagus. <laughs> but while these folks are living their best frontier life, they are no stranger to modern day problems. As the nearby areas become more populated, a proposed development plan for the Bear River has begun that would divert up to 30% of the river. This would change the landscape and environment drastically, which would make the recreation of this journey in its entirety an impossible feat. This may be the last time that we're able to do this actual run. The river, it's been kind of changing. We left yesterday and the river was about 18 inches higher when we left this morning. We woke up and it dropped 18 inches. Well, it's, it's an incredible environment, but it's changing and change is inexorable. It happens. Oh, it's so worth preserving. The, the, those kind of places are getting fewer. We need to preserve what we have left before it's, it's all gone. We would like to do it again in two years on the 200th anniversary that it happened on. If things work out for us, we'll be doing it again then. Of course, if the Bear River is preserved long enough to make it to the 200 year anniversary of Bridger's journey, there is one shared sentiment that is sure to bring this whole crew back to the water. The adventure. Oh, I love adventure. The adventure. Try to follow the footsteps of those that gone before us. We've seen lots of wildlife, the, uh, the plant life that we've seen that you don't see in other places. Uh, it's been a good adventure so far. Uh, the canoeing, it's uh, learning a new skill on the canoeing. And I, I just love to do this kind of stuff. And on this trip, I have to show the man how tough I am. <laughs> the next time you're looking to scratch that adventurous itch, take a page from the Mountain Men Association and look back toward the legends of the past. Along the way at the Bear River, I'm Nick Chase.